Here you go. Okay, so I call to order the Board of Assessors meeting at 9.32. And I have to say this is a public meeting being audio recorded for cable broadcast and internet postings on the Dighton website and the Dighton YouTube uh, page. Do I have to read the www dot? I don't have to. Uh, no. I don't think so. Okay. All right. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Anybody who's not here, say I. Oh. Physically here. Sure. All right. Old business. Okay. So do we have Nate? You have is to make it? a statement that you can't so, yeah, be involved. Yeah. Okay. So I have to what recuse myself, I yes. guess, of any uh, really discussion or any decision making on this, uh, because of my uh family relationship with the Hershey's. So I am in a listening mode only. Okay, agenda item 4A, status of 2440 Chestnut Street, Nathaniel Hershey to attend by Zoom. I see Jessica's here. Is Nathaniel here too? Uh, Nate is in a meeting for work and he's not able to join, so he asked me to jump on. Okay. Uh, Mrs. Schechter, would you give us an update on just what we decided to do and you were told to get in touch with the Department of Revenue and take it from there? So um, I contacted the Department of Revenue to see if we would be able to um, correct the error that was made. Um, so it's eight of 58 is what um, that action is to do an abatement after abatement period. And um, so it was back and forth a little bit. And then we received um, a letter from the lawyer handling um, that reviews all the cases. And in that case, um, in this case, they um, denied and they denied the um, request for the eight of fifty eight, and they gave us two reasons why um, it was not shown that the taxpayer was precluded by extraordinary or mitigating circumstances from seeking an abatement through the usual process, and the abatement of the tax or charge would not would not correct a substantial inequity, cure a grievance hardship, or provide a public benefit. So I'd, I'd like to say that um, I strongly disagree with both of these statements. Um, it, is there any appeal process or? I, I'm not sure. So, so what exactly, is, can we, can you review for me? Cause it's been a long time. Uh, what was, when did the error occur? What, what, year was the abatement given and uh, when was the mistake? Okay, so fiscal year 22, um, we had a half bath and um, finished area above the garage. So um, the Hershey's came in, they um, filled out the abatement form um, during the deadline, everything. Um, we gave them abatement and then for some reason, it was not like committed into the system. So it remained on, on their property card for 23. So, so fiscal year 22, they were granted an abatement. Correct. So fiscal year 23, what happened? So for preliminary bills, so that would be the, the bills in the summertime that we receive, that takes into account the abatement. So for, because mm -hmm. it's previous year and any abatements and divide by four. So that's how that is done. So um, when the actual bills went, it, the the value of those two items were put on. The full the property, value. The full okay. value of those right. two items were put on. The, but. Um, so, so it's fiscal year 23 is what we're talking about. Am I correct? Right. Right. So there was not. Those two items were not on the preliminary. Yeah, but it value, matters how much do they no. pay for the year. Whether it's on the preliminary or the final doesn't matter. It's how much do they pay for the year. Um, it, it's all together. They just just split okay, it four I'm pieces. Just breaking it out so you know. Um, so I believe that first of all, 
you know, the, the, I suppose the first one you can make the unargument, you know, the taxpayer is precluded by an extraordinary or mitigating surf circumstances. Right. The, I think the extraordinary or mitigating circumstances is that they already applied. Right. And, and they expected no... that this is a right. fix. They had no exactly. reason that they thought they would need to file. An exactly. Um, and the abatement of the tax charge would not correct a substantial inequity. Well, yeah, it would. The problem, they were overcharged. Um, so, so like I said, I strongly disagree with both of these. Um, is there an appeal process? I have to look into it. I don't, I'm not sure if there's an appeal process. Um, how much see. money are we, excuse me, how much money are we talking about? 600 bucks, 400, 600, around, like around 600. That's for the entire year? All right, so when I, the first two bills went I out. I think it's so actually more than that. Excuse me. I I'm think chairing it's more the meeting, that. so if you're going to ask a question, Mrs. Hershey, please address it through the chair, and I will call on you. Uh, this is Nancy speaking. I assume the chair, because Eric, who is chairman, can't participate. So um, FY22 was okay. FY23, the first two bills that came out mm -hmm. Had been reduced by the amount of the abatement that was granted, or a part of the abatement that was granted in 22. Yeah. When the two final bills came out, the January one mm -hmm. and the, the, the was it May one, somehow, when it was recalculated, did it pick up the full amount, or did, did it take away the, the, the previous abatement it had gotten on two bills and hit them with the whole thing, mm -hmm. the, right. the full amount? Right. That's why I said that I think okay. talking about individual bills sort of muddies the whole waters. I think we just talk about the year easier. So I need to understand the process. The first two bills uh, are, estimated. are automatic based on what you paid the previous and, fiscal year. And any abatements. Right. So in the meantime, this, the tax rate gets set and gets approved by DOR. And then the new tax rates are applied against the value of the property. And the whole thing is calculated and the succeeding bills come out. So, so the original abatement was... Uh, can I say dollar amounts? Yeah. It's not a, well. Oh, wait a minute. Um, are abatements covered under the executive session rule? I think so. The, I think, discussion of reasons for abatement and such, uh, you know, obviously. Yeah. The, yeah. So, all right. So don't say the, the dollars then, because I. No, I, I'm sorry. I think the amounts are public record. I, I don't think there's an issue. So what Mrs. Hershey was saying, it, the abatement was more. But that included um, other items. Like we had it as ninety five percent complete. Okay. So that is where that abatement came through. Came the additional money. All right. So it's. I mean, we we took on ninety seven thousand off of the value. Okay. All right. So that abatement, but that so, wasn't all just above the garage and the. Okay. So the only. Part of this property, this house that we're talking about, is the half a bath, and the area above the garage that is not finished. Right. That's what went to the DOR yep. for review. Yep. Okay, Mrs. Hirishi, uh, go ahead. Um, my husband clearly, you know, has the exact dollar amount, but I do believe that it is more than six hundred dollars. Um, and I would agree with the gentleman who, um who disagrees, you know, like with the final decision, you know, like that was granted. Um, I'm wondering if we are able to obtain a copy, you know, like of that report that you received. That should have been sent to them, right? Yeah, we emailed it. This is just the decision saying the reasons why. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pretty perfunctory. Oh. It's called denial notice. Okay, thank you. Has and did you email that to my husband? Yes, um, someone from the office emailed it to him. Okay. As far as I know. Okay, and so you know, I do want to also re reiterate that the reason why we're in this situation, you know, like, is because of an error in your office. 
we, we so this is Bill Moore, um, and I we agree with you. Um, mm -hmm. the, the problem is is that our hands are tied uh, by the Department of Revenue. And okay. I, for one, I'm trying to figure out, is there some way to fix this? And I'm not seeing a way to do so right just yet. Okay, so what will the plan be then? So uh, I did just ask Stephanie, who is our primary assessor, to if there's some way, if there is an appeal process, you said you'd mm -hmm. look into it. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> because I believe in, Nancy, do you agree um, that we should continue to push this issue? No. Okay. The reason I say that is because uh, when uh, Mr. Hershey attended the meeting, when we were discussing money and all that, he said it was it's not so much the money. He wanted to make sure it doesn't happen again. He wanted to make sure his records are corrected and other people in town don't experience a similar thing. And my other concern is, um, Although this went to an attorney, uh, an attorney at DOR, DLS, uh, Division of Local Services, made the decision. It's signed by the, the uh, Senior Deputy Commissioner of Local Services, Sean Cronin. Um, <laughs> this would be almost, I mean, this is the head of that department outside of the commissioner. And I don't see it's going to go anywhere. Quite frankly, I thought the terms were a little hmm, tough, but uh, I don't think we have a prayer, in all honesty. If it had been signed by somebody lower in the, in the order of whatever, or even an attorney, then I would say, let's get in touch with them and see if there's anything we can do. The fact is signed by the commissioner, the senior deputy commissioner. This is the gentleman that approves everything that comes through. But to us. me, but I, I'm I'm not disagreeing with you on that. But to me, to reach out it seems speak. that by by the nature of the reasons given for the denial, this person doesn't understand the situation. Um, so that, that to so have if they were unaware, it was still incorrect. They wouldn't have put an abatement in. So that's why they missed the deadline. So by the time they looked at their property right, card. Right. It was past the tenth, so that's I, I'm, not really I think their both of these fault of are, are incorrect, and and so that's what I'm saying. Not an appeal, at least you know. Can we talk to Mr. Cronin or or some other mm -hmm. person to give for further details, or can you give for further explanation as to why this this is being denied? Mm -hmm. um, so, so could you explain the process a little bit? <clears throat> you filed paperwork. Did you speak to someone? In we what, did it over email. Um, I think I've sent you guys a response a couple times, but um, did it say what the dollars were? And did it explain that the errors were made in, or the error was made in the assessor's office? I, I an oversight lane for the errors. This is still what what they came out with. Uh, if I may. Yes. Yes. Go ahead, Mrs. Hershey. Go ahead, please. Okay. So um, I'm going to insist that we find out what the appeal process is, because I'm sure there is one. And um, Mrs. Goulart, with all due respect, I am horrified that you would not insist on fighting for the people of Dighton you know, like to find a, a, a solution to this issue. This is an issue that took place in a Dighton town office, and I am horrified that you would not insist on fighting fighting for the people of Dighton. That is that is ridiculous, and I'm horrified by your response. I'm not surprised by your comment, but I'm going to address it right now. This isn't about the people of the town of Dighton. This is about an incident that occurred, and I hope it's only a one-time incident, that occurred in the office of the Board of Assessors. I'm gonna quote, it is, was not shown that the taxpayer was precluded by extraordinary or mitigating circumstances from seeking an abatement through the usual process. The response could be, they weren't aware. That's why they didn't file. That's why that happened. But the second one is, the abatement of the tax or charge would not correct a substantial inequity, cure a grievous hardship, or provide a public benefit. That second reason, in my opinion, 
it zeroes it down to or focuses on one case, one incident. This is not the town of Dighton. And I am quite sure going forward that the assessor's office, regardless who's in there or who's sitting on this board, is going to make sure that when those when that tax rate is set and when bills are going out for the second time, they're going to be looking back before those actually get issued and the data is sent in to issue the bills to make sure people who were getting abatements continue to get them. The other thing too is the 1st of January, the uh, assessors uh, pretty much get in touch with people or follow up the best they can and say to people, hey, you're gonna file an abatement this year or you should file one because the window is, is short. So that's the reason why I don't see us, I will not vote to go any further with this. When I see it signed by the commissioner, a deputy commissioner, this is the top person there. If anyone had a chance of an appeal, like I say, somebody lower in the department, I would say, yeah, let's find out. Um, but the reasons he gave, and I'm focusing on the second one because your comments about me not representing the town, of, the people in the town of Dighton is not acceptable. That statement he made is clear. It does not provide what he refers to as a public benefit. I, I don't see a, a burden if to just ask to look into if there is an abatement process. Abatement or appeal? Uh, I'm sorry, appeal process. Mm -hmm. And like I said, maybe, maybe an email or a phone call, at least make some effort to see if something can be done. Because regardless of who gave this denial, I think you must agree that uh, the Hersey's do not deserve to be being overcharged with $600. I agree with that completely, but I will refer you back to the statement made by Mr. Hershey. It wasn't so much about the money. He was more concerned that this wouldn't recur and that other people in town would not suffer, if you will, a hardship or a loss. I will, um, regardless if you know, like that is what my husband stated, I will also say that we have had a change in circumstances and it is about the money. And so it, it is not up to you and it is not up to the state to determine whether or not it is a financial hardship. I am telling you that it is about the money. And so we need to file an ap appeal for this. And I'm going to ask that you take care of that. Um, I'm also going to request that um, this issue resurfaces on the agenda, you know, like for the Board of Assessors, for every meeting coming up, you know, like until we have a solution for this. Well, I, for one, can say that, you know, beyond asking for if there is an appeal process, I don't think there's anything else that we can do uh, because our hands are tied because we're, unfortunately, uh, we can only do the things that the Department of Revenue will allow us to do. Um, I think that if, you know, if we had the authority to do so, we would have done so immediately um, because uh, I know, at least at the last meeting, we were all in agreement that, you know, this money was overcharged and should be. And that's why we went forward with this Five of eight. Is that eight of fifty-eight. Eight of what? Eight of fifty-eight. Eight of fifty-eight. Uh, that's that's what's the um, that's the appeal process that the board of assessors can make towards the DOR to say, hey, we've made a mistake. Um, but I believe this is the only mechanism that we have at our disposal. Um, it. I'm just saying it's simply a decision that we don't have the authority to make. Um, I still think Nancy and I are at an impasse. I'm not sure. With only two people, how do we, I don't know how to decide this. Um, With us in disagreement, it doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> Welcome to we the town a, of We would have a yes vote and a no vote, so we don't have a majority vote. Hmm. Kyle? 
see the harm just finding out if there is an appeal process. It won't take me long. I should just, just to ease everyone's mind to know where this is all we can do. I think that's a good. But what you're proposing right now is quite frankly, is trying to uh, get around a vote that hasn't been taken. And we know what the outcome of the vote's gonna be. I understand what you're talking about, but both the authority of this board to do it. In other words, the bill is gonna, if the motion is made, first of all, there won't be a second. But if there were a second, Bill would say yes, and I'm gonna say no, you can't go further with it. <laughs> okay. Well, I will just... make a suggestion though. Since Mr. and Mrs. Hershey have a copy of this denial notice, I would suggest that Mr. and Mrs. Hershey send a letter to Sean Cronin advising him that this board followed the directive and did not uh, approve uh, any kind of uh, payment or anything else. She can appeal directly to them. He's a public, he's a public employee. And his information is on the um the sheet here. Um all she'll need is the mailing address for DLS. But Sean Cronin is the person. Well, just you know, for the record, as you know, Nancy made me think of, I will make a motion to request Stephanie to look into an appeal process. I'll step down a second. Discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion defeated. Okay. You don't have to there's, wait for me. Yeah, right? there's nothing else we can um, do about this. The only thing I would ask is this letter, this a decision from DLS that you sent to Mr. and Mrs. Hirishi. Um, it does have an email address. Uh, so if she wishes to contact Sean Cronin, um, send her Sean Cronin's email address. All right. And that way she can get in touch with him directly, refer to this decision and see what he says. Okay. I'm writing my little spiel. Don't I, wait I'm, for me to- I'm, I'm trying to, I, I don't know. I, I don't think I quite got what Nancy was asking. Um, could you, one of you repeat what? What I'm saying is, if I were the agreed party, first of all, I truly believe. Oh, you're, you were saying to send an, <laughs> to the Hershey's. Excuse me. Yes. That, okay. Right. With his email and any okay. contact information for them to continue. I truly believe as the elected board of assessors, when we get a directive from the commissioner, we get to follow it. <clears throat> now, as far as an appeal process, <clears throat> if I were the aggrieved body, I would get in touch with a person who sent this decision and say, I'm the aggrieved party, Commissioner Cronin. I wish to know why this was not, why the, the reasons given preclude the town of Dighton from taking action to uh, refund the money or, or provide some kind of uh, refund to me, because I'm the aggrieved party. It's agreed that it happened in the town. It was an error in the assessor's office, which he knows when, when this decision was rendered. But um, as the person or the party who is aggrieved, I would appeal to him directly, quite frankly. And if by any chance this gets reversed or changed, they're gonna notify us anyhow, and then we can do something. Okay. So okay. I'm going to ask that this um, that this be put on your agenda for your next uh, board meeting as well, please. Yeah, we can have an update on uh, if you're successful. If you decide to contact Commissioner Cronin and you have any information, uh, we'll have something on the agenda called uh, update on uh, two four four zero Chestnut Street. Yeah. 
So are you automatically going to put that on your agenda for next month? Because there, no, there should, there should be an update. There should be follow-up. So, 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 Je so Jessica, ju just to be, you know, painfully clear, um, this board and Stephanie is not going to take any action between now and then, um, other than sending you a letter. Um, that's what Nancy has just said, stated is that, um, you know, we're, we're done. We're not going to pursue the issue further. Um, if you would like to try to make an appeal directly to the Department of Revenue, uh, we would recommend that. And um, if you should have some degree of success, we will gladly listen to you at our next meeting. That's if I paraphrase Nancy. Correctly. Yes. So in that in that letter, mm -hmm. uh, make sure you put his email address mm -hmm. and also his mailing address. Uh, and as a matter of phone number too, because I don't see that on here either on the decision. Okay. Um, I, see is, this as, I see this as an unresolved issue. And is, um, we certainly will follow up as you recommended. And mm -hmm. I would like this to be a follow up for an update on 2440 Chestnut Street on your next agenda, please. Yeah, it'll follow up. It'll be under old business and it will say instead of status of it, it'll be update on 2440 Chestnut Street. Um, and we can arrange a Zoom meeting. Um, be sure that when you call or write, however you contact Sean Cronin, um, you reference the file number 2023 600. It's on that. Uh, denial notice. Okay. Okay. Well, Anything else on this uh, agenda item? No. No. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, you can take over. Okay. Jesse, okay. you all set? Are you going to stay for the rest of the meeting? Thank you, Jessica. Oh, no. I am Sorry, I'm moving up. on with my work day. Thank you. Okay. Thank Have you, a Jessica. good day. Okay, the Scott Centennial Adaiton Development and Industrial Commission meeting. So, so these are the, who, who, yeah. who is on the Adaiton Development and Industrial Commission? Dan Higgins. 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 Are they appointed? Uh, are they, they're not elected, right? I don't remember. Ever they're voted they're for appointed. Somebody. They're appointed by uh, selectmen? Yes. Can I ask what they uh, Paul Reynolds, I know, is on there. Okay. Um, um, yeah, and I'm trying so to. Have think. you seen like? I don't think I have. I have think. you seen the video that they put out? Like they did one for. Uh, I saw the one Paul Reynolds did. And they also did a video. He was the interviewer with the. Um, I'm sorry, I forgot that the the new gym that opened. Oh, up at oh, Reeds. One of the Reeds. Yeah. Oh no, I haven't seen that one. So they interviewed so, the owner and you know talked about all the things they're doing there, okay. something like that. So the DDIC, their job is to Bring try to United. promote business on the United. Yeah, yeah. So and great, uh, to attract business. Yeah, and United. help help United. business owners if there are um, oh I don't know are, issues that something, need. Something they have United a um, to keep them here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're having a um. Uh, I don't know if you call it a fair or a, an event at the Aggie School. I'm thinking it's coming up this fall. They had one before, and it was with the Taunton Area Chamber of Commerce, I think. Um, but I went to that one meeting to find out what it, they wanted from the Board of Assessors. And, um, and the, the request was they want to have a meeting with us to talk about one of the concerns raised um, I think by a property, a business owner was um, concerned about personal property taxes. And that's where this comes from, mm -hmm. right? And um, so I asked them um, if they could send us something ahead of time. Which is this. Uh, yeah. So these are the questions they have, this right? Is so, the so these are the questions they have. I'm but sorry. this is the same list we saw last time. So yeah, finally, but then there's the attachments. I mean, I didn't see this. I didn't no, see this. No, this is this is new. Okay. This is new. Yeah. This to is answer new. those questions. Form form of us. Oh, I see. So oh, there's the answers. Okay. And they meet on the fourth Monday of each month at six o'clock. So 
So are you suggesting that one of oh, wait, so I think well, that is for you. Oh, okay, I see. Okay. So you want a lot of good questions. I mean, I'm wounded. You answered these questions. These are answers to questions. Yeah, Lisa, Lisa answered Lisa questions. Lisa went through that terribility in there. Okay. So they need somebody to go there and explain these to them? Well, it would be, yeah, in their recorded session. Right. So the public can see it. I think yeah. they want more than one person because I went to the last one. Okay. And got all the information. And uh, they you said. got the information they were looking for. Uh, yeah. Okay. Like. The first, I went to their meeting because it was like, what is it you want to discuss with the Board of Assessors? Right, I remember And they that. Okay. did all that. And we got this. And now we're at the point they want us to come to a meeting. Because I said to them, I'll take it back to the board. And we'll plan on meeting with you sometime in the future. That's where we're headed now. Okay. For sometime in the future. Or sometime in the future. So, it, I think back to the future. Either one of us or all of us. I agree. Otherwise, you get OML issues. Uh, so, I think I think it would be good if we could all make it simply because um, they're saying board of assessors. And, and like you say, I don't mind showing up for the initial meeting, but I don't feel I should be talking for the whole board because you might think of things that I wouldn't possibly think of. Or you might have comments that would be important that I just don't think they should get here from one assessor. I mean, whatever. So can we so reach when, out? when is it? So September 25th. <laughs> October 30th, that is the fourth Monday of uh, different meetings. October September 25th. 30th, I believe, is special town meeting. Oh. Okay. So they won't be doing it then. So. <laughs> no, they won't they won't be meeting right. that night either. I don't, um, I'm not sure then because those oh, are the two dates. September 25th, 25, you said? Yeah. The Monday. Okay. I I could attend that one with you guys if you can. I gotta I gotta look to see what I got on at okay. home, but I will get back to as you. of right now it looks okay. Um, Stephanie, if you could contact them and say, first of all, find out if the town meeting is October the thirtieth, and then say, um, that's a special town meeting night. Have you set another date to meet in October and find out what that is and send us an email? Yep. I can do that. And then I guess we can file through these answers that Lisa came up with. And if we need to sit with Lisa and get some more information, we can do that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's nice. Right, let me get this right. So it's Paul Reynolds, right? I don't really know. Who Dan Higgins. Right, I'll, Dan the only I'll figure it out. I'll go over to the office I'm, after. I'm trying to think if, if uh, and if he was, he may have resigned. Um, Jonathan um, Gale. I haven't. I don't think he's on the development. No, he was an attorney for a while. Wasn't he our attorney? Jonathan. No, no, no. Jonathan Gale. Um, he, 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 on disability. Oh, I got you. He right. resigned yes, from right. that. He's just the. Okay. Well, it's ADA irrelevant. I guess he's on the board. I don't care. It's um okay. So. Right, so what are we deciding that the board? So we don't we still have two members out of the board. If three can't make it, then well, I guess if it's twenty fifth, whoever can make it. It's nice if we all can make it. If not, then at least one of us shows up. Right. I can do that date. And between now and then, I can even get with those guys and see if they need What time do they know? 6, 6 p.m. I want yep. to say so now that my... it's not here. I think it's at the Council on Aging, too, I, I think. think. All right. Correct. Yeah. So now that my phone stopped going spinny, spinny, uh, yes, I'm available on the 25th. And yes, the 29th or say 25th. You said 25th. 25th. Okay. Yeah, right. I can't even. 29th. Monday, no, 25th. Yeah, 25th. Sorry. Okay. And I can confirm certainly that the uh, town the meeting, meeting is, is on October 30th. Because right. it's on my So have to have a different date, but we can start with the 25th. Is it? No. You got it on your calendar? Yeah, it's on my calendar. Okay. At least that's what the okay. Okay. selectman approved. That's all we had to okay. do, right? Let's just discuss that right there. Yeah. Okay. All right. Personal property taxes I'll from solar get projects. Get back to you when I check my calendar at home. Okay. I have a feeling this is. In Nancy's wheelhouse. Oh, so this is, I brought this up at the last meeting because um, at the department head meeting, I had mentioned that um, we are receiving revenue from uh, personal property on solar farms, mm -hmm. the ones uh, that have pilots, and we have some that don't have pilots, but they're paying taxes. The money is coming in as tax revenue and going into the, the estimated receipts and is being expended for operational expenditures. 
And I said, there some communities have taken action to set this money aside into special, uh, whether you call it, um, you can add it to your, um, uh, your capital stabilization or your stabilization, or you can set up a special account. So um, Bill said he needed more information. So the only one that I have something from uh, hard copy is the town of Rehoboth. The process isn't interesting. This isn't a simple town meeting vote. From what I can see, and I got to print, my printer died, so I got to get this out because I've got to get it to the Board of Selectmen. The first thing that happens is there were two articles on a town meeting warrant. Um, and I'm not sure of the order because I, the first one is to ask the residents if they would approve setting this money aside in, come up with a name, mm -hmm. for future appropriation. Okay. And if the taxpayers say, yeah, we think that's a good idea, and it, it passes, you then must vote to petition the legislature through the home rule petition to get permission to do this. Okay, so that's for putting the money that comes in from solar personal property yep. into a separate account and not into operating. No, you, you set it aside. You set it aside, correct. Yes. And you don't look at it and say, we've got this as taxpayer money for the rest of But how, for, first of all, you say, do you want to do this? And they say, yeah. You get the home rule petition. Okay. You get that. So let, that gets passed. Then what happens is, because they sent me a copy of another article. So now you've got an account with some money in it and you want to do whatever that account was set up to do. Then you go to the town meeting and you get permission to take, I think it was like $143,000 out of what you this do. account that you going with from that? that special account. Okay. And they, it, again, it requires taxpayer approval okay. to spend the money. So you set the money aside into a separate account and then you also decide, the town decide what you can actually spend that money on. Am I understanding that correctly? Yes. Okay. That's one avenue. The other avenue is just throw it into. The right now, all the money and it gets spent on whatever we need it for. It's That's just the other option, it, right? It's it's just the the it comes into right. uh, estimated receipts, part, general part, revenue. Right. It and closes it, out, and, it, and we that's, use it to, that's the money you have. It's not right. identified. Right. I got you. Okay. So now, if you'll remember, what has happened in the past for a number of years, when we've had money that we could from the from the general tax revenue, when we've had money that we could set aside into um, the capital stabilization, we've put, done that, we put it in stabilization, and we've also put extra money when we could into the OPEB account, all right? Uh, the uh, benefits for um, uh, retired employees to cover their health insurance and all that good stuff, not their retirement, but their medical benefits and stuff as retirees. Um, <clears throat> because we were on a pay-as-you-go system and the uh, rules for accounting changed a number of years ago. And you had to uh, set up an account and some places set up accounts and didn't put any money in it. So they still got this unfunded liability. But the town of Dayton has slowly put money into the OPEB account. And not that we've met all of the uh, liability that is is projected into the years for retirement. We've made a good attempt, let me put it that way, which looks good on your financial statements too. Um, so, I'm sorry. So anyhow, um, Rehoboth was the town that I knew had done it. Right. Now I got in touch with, uh, <laughs> I got in touch with Marlboro because there's a man there uh, on the committee I'm on. And I said, Mike, tell me, how do you handle personal property taxes that you collect from solar farms. He says, we don't have any solar farms in Marlboro. Oh, well, I was shocked. The day. <laughs> but they're getting, they're in the process of dealing with, it sounds like battery storage from maybe National Grid or whoever provides power, because it's not a solar farm, it's a battery storage thing, but there will be personal property taxes. So I would assume they're gonna handle it. You have to handle it the okay. same way. So let's circle back to why we're even talking about this, right? So if I remember correctly, we were talking about putting this money into a separate account and not into 
the general account because it doesn't last forever. That money only has a certain life cycle and it ends. So we don't want to be spending money that dies off over a period of time and ends at some point in time. Because then it, if we can live within our means. Because the levy limit goes with that. And if this money right. that's helping to fund it and as the levy limit goes up, the money goes Once away. Once the money disappears. The levy limit is that, here. Yeah. So the delta, the difference between what we were collecting, what we now need because it's in the levy, is pushed back on all the taxpayers. So Correct. We're talk, and we're awful sensitive about increased taxes. We have been for a long time. So that's why this is being discussed. I just want everybody who's maybe watching, yep. listening, understands and make sure the board is on the same page with that fiscal sort of thought if, process. If I may, I, yeah, please. I think that we're all in agreement that okay. I agree with everything Nancy's saying yep. uh, that it does make sense because probably after 20 years or something like that, the income is going to fall off a cliff, which is going to require an automatic tax increase. Because it's already in the levy. Because it's already in the levy. That's so right. I, I agree. You can't back that logic, down. Right, exactly. Now you're logic in there is sound. Yes. The only thing that I question is I don't think this board is the appropriate uh, vehicle to make this happen. I think the Board of Selectmen is the correct vehicle because yeah, we, determine, agree, yeah. we determine what is taxed. They determine how it's spent. I think the appropriate action would be for this board to make, make, a, a, make a recommendation yeah. to the Board of Selectmen and let them uh, carry the ball with this. And tell them Mike Mullen, I, I would agree. Yeah. Right? Yeah, so, articulate clearly the reason why and what our position is mm -hmm. as a board. Um, and recommendation to them. I think that's fair. So how the board got involved is because at the last department head meeting, I raised this issue because I have continually raised it even when I was on the board of selectmen. And I kept saying, guys, when I get the first pilot agreement, we have got to watch, and this is previous boards of selectmen, we have got to watch this closely because when we start getting this revenue for personal property, okay. we have got to manage it. Now, as I said, um, we've got solar farms in various stages. The big ones are not online yet and they're not being taxed, but I'm looking down the road. So at that meeting, when I brought it up again, Selectman Hall said to me, um, can you get us information on this? I said, I will. I know Rehoboth does it. Um, I haven't gotten responses from others that <laughs> might be doing it. So, but anyhow, I've, I've got to give this all to the Board of Selectmen. So it's not so much that I was looking for us to vote to, to do anything. I wanted you guys to know that I had brought it up. It is a tax issue. And even if we don't control it, yes, we should have a yeah, recommendation. So it falls but, yeah, in our part. I get all right, that. And so, I'm just following up on what I was asked to do. But I wanted to tell you guys yeah. what I found out before I just turn this over and say, here's the process and here's what has to happen. Now, the yeah. fact that there's going to be... Um, home rule petition, they may decide we're not doing this at the special. We're going to take this to the annual. All I want them to do is do something. Sure. And, and they were probably saying, listen, we don't know anything yet because this is all new, right? Solars are fairly new for, you know, everybody, everything. Yeah. Pretty much. So we can yet. correct course as we go. As yep. issues come up, we correct right. it. We see a potential problem down the road. Let's address it now, be proactive yep. and not reactive. I agree so, with that. So, so you want to go you want to, for the Board of Selectmen? Do uh, you want to well, draft something it up was, have us look yeah, at it? Yeah, what it was, well, I got to get this uh, to Mike anyhow. And so um, what I can do is put together a response to the, let me say the department head meeting, you know, as a follow-up to the department head meeting, when I was asked to da 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 this is the information I had gathered. Uh, here are motions that were passed in Rehoboth, and this is the process, so forth and so on. And make sure you guys you get all that. Why. I mean, if you put down there the reason why we're even discussing this, I think that would help yeah, them yeah. to say, oh, yeah. we get it. It's going to be a huge shortfall. I think it needs to be explained. I think so. Oh, yeah. I, mean, I think yeah. clearly you have so, to think, this is why we're talking about this in the first place, because we're going to fall off the cliff 20 years from now. We're setting so everybody up for failure. I would and, like to make a motion to authorize Nancy to speak to either the Board of Selectmen or Mike Mullen on this subject as we have discussed. Second. Motion well, made a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. And if we can, what? And, and what I'll on. put in there is, is I'll also say that um, the Board of Assessors 
uh, has had a brief discussion on this and they're uh, uh, look forward to working with you and blah, blah, blah. Okay. Yep. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. That's all the blah, blah. Okay. Okay. Invoices. No invoices. Are we paying anybody? No. Nope. Nobody's getting paid. Um, we haven't had invoices in a while. This is odd. I can sign off on invoices. That's right. We gave our sign off authority on some things. See on how invoices? better this is? Yeah, like. Yeah, things that were yeah. $10. WB makes whatever. Okay. Something like that. As long as you have budget for it. You can't make it. Right. Mm. Um, I signature. Motion for <laughs> the. Uh, to sign the monthly list of abatements for motor vehicles and trailer excise for 2023 in the amount of $858.12 and 2022 in the amount of $89.26. Second. Motion made and seconded. Oh, it's 89 months. Uh, 2926. 2926. Let me look. Okay. It's like normal stuff. Yep. No discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, this is a warning commitment for um for fourth. Installment of motor vehicle excise for this year. The sign the warrant. Yep, so it's one page, two different pages. One's a warrant, one's a commitment. Oh, got two different places to sign. Yeah. yeah. Motion uh, to sign the warrant and um, commitment for uh, motor vehicle and trailer excise. excise in the amount of $122,168.84. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 It goes faster now that I understand what these things actually are. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> I'm moving right along here. I'm sure you sign. You sign all on two okay. pages on this one. Two pages on this. Two on this one. Not That's one. only one on that one. Okay. Okay. Following the stickers. Okay. So now what do we have? Oh, here we get the interesting stuff. Release and re-record. Yes. So is it hot here? Yeah. A little bit. Stuffy. Okay. Yeah. So that first one is the release. Um, this is the Rougeau. We're finally at the part where the, the rollback's been paid. We receive the, the checks that need to go to the registry. So we're releasing what's recorded, which is the 35.17 acres. Mm -hmm. And there's 9.73 is going to be coming out. So they're re-recording the 13.27 that remains. That math. Well, motion that we sign the release and reclassification uh, for the chapter 61A pro property for Arujos. Yeah. Uh, 1522 William Street. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? So uh that math doesn't add up. This is recorded this way, transposed. So I'm taking it out, transposed, same way it went in. I don't know what you mean. I don't. What, what, so what doesn't add up? So we've got 35 acres, and you said nine right. was coming out, but 13 is going back in. That's off by like 30 acres. Well, 35 minus nine. Right, you get. I'm sorry, I'm not 30. I'm sorry, not 30. Uh, 35. 22 versus 35, 13. Sorry, right. It's off by 13 acres. Right, 13.27 is going back in. That's what no, you've no. got it, here. It's 13.27. Uh, so this is my notes, so it might not even. These, this was the, oh, these were the letters. Look at these. Wasn't this, 
wasn't this uh, the money that we kept waiting for and waiting yeah. for? And I finally got in touch with somebody because they, they got in touch with me about where's our pilot agreement. And I said, there's going to be no pilot agreement. We've got back taxes that haven't been paid because the taxes have to be paid by the developer. And for some reason, it just dragged on and dragged on. We talked about this early this year. But after I said, we're not talking pilot agreement until we get this straightened out, the checks did come in. Okay. I have the wrong so number. really the question is just the numbers, right? So we're out of the tax issue, so we can do this because they paid. So Bill's only yeah. questioning the numbers, right? The math. Yeah, so that's, that's, that's my ex Minus nine. Correctly, I want this correct. You end up with 26. So 26 should technically be going in, not 13. Not 13. Because 13 leaves you with 13 left. Yes, I understand. Okay. Why don't we... So is this incorrect? I don't know. Because this is my notes, and I went back and forth with a lawyer, so. Who's lawyer? Theirs? Uh, yeah, one I dealt with a year ago. And so, I'm waiting so I think we should. Line it and so she yeah. Skip so that I'll one until I can. Call for a vote. Oh, it I was just trying to do it the right way. Oh, you made a second. Okay, so we made second. discussion. Okay, so. Any more discussion? All, yeah, no discussion. Any more discussion? No. Okay. All those in favor? Or you making a second motion to sideline it? Hey, you know what? I'm going to withdraw the second. You withdraw the motion. Make a new motion to table until the next meeting. Okay. All right. So, you're so you don't have withdrawing to... your second. Yeah. Okay. You withdraw your motion. Withdraw my motion. So you don't have to record that. You don't have to record that. What you're going to let me have my two pages back, okay? But what now? What we're going to do is this is the Just motion. You're going, this is the vote you're going to um, record for the minutes. All right. Fine. Okay. Uh, I move that we. Table the um, release and classification for of sixty one A property for fifteen twenty two William Street. Uh, map eleven lot eight dash zero one. Second. Right. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion on that motion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. No. No discussion on a motion to table. Okay. Sorry. That is correct. Um, I don't know. I've. Maybe we just go back to the old way of doing things. Uh, I was just trying to be more proper. You know, the, the proper rules of order, you're supposed to have motions, you're supposed to second, then you're supposed to discuss it. Which is what we did. We discussed yeah, it. Yeah, and that was like... What did you want a motion? What that was messy. On, that was ugly and messy. So let's just go back to the way we were going before. <laughs> it's just, we'll talk about it, and then we'll make motions. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this is the release and reclassification for <clears throat> William Street, 82 to 77 acres for AM Realty Trust. Um, <clears throat> you know what? McClellan. Uh, motion to table. This is the next, this is the other piece of the property. There's two property owners that this is solo time on. It's, well, it's two different liens. Yeah. <clears throat> They're they're doing they're releasing separate. I realize that, but this is all part of this. But all I'm asking you is, do you want to check this one too? When you check that one, to make sure that what's so, here is okay. Long and drawn out. Okay. So I guess that's fine. I think it's right. So you motion the table or a second? Yes, I will second. Okay, motion made and seconded. Any discussion? No. no, that's right. I'm sorry. There's no. All those in favor? All right. All right. All right, just have it. So this is next meeting. Um, so following uh, Mr. Moore's recommendation, uh, is F a different property owner or is it the same? Is it connected to the previous two we tabled? Um, F is, it's just out there in limbo. But it's map 11 lot 801, which is also D. So this should be tabled also, I think. That's chapter 61A. Okay, second. It's connected to, to yeah. D. Yeah. It is, right? Yeah. Motion to table agenda item F to the next meeting. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Is G something different? Yes. Well, in the street, um, I know that. Um, 
just taking the wife off of, I don't know if the circumstance behind it, but it's just a name change. So when they have a lien, any changes have to be right. re-recorded with the So for adding the wife, is that what this one No, this is the original. Right. This is classified, yeah. Right, what was the, the name? It's not the original, this is a new application. There is no original. Well, you're releasing and you're re-recording. Right. right. So all I'm saying is we're releasing, which this doesn't say who, and the re-recording includes the wife. Ah, releasing, it does have a name there. So you're releasing it under the husband's name and putting it under both the husband and the wife. Oh, okay. So it's backwards of what I thought. I didn't look this over. Is I... that correct? Yes. Um, I just don't remember. So I motion that we... Uh... I've been out this week, you know. <laughs> well, we'll fix that. There'll be no more time. Know, we'll figure it out. No more time. No. Uh, I motion that we sign the release and uh, reclassification of chapter Chapter 61A land um, for 2437 Wellington Street. Uh, taking this is only taking it out of Mr. Horton's name and putting it under Mr. and Mrs. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Two carries. Okay. All right. So the next. Um, it's really, I don't have anything for this. This is uh, the Council on Aging. We are, um, we've, we've been talking for a few months now, like on and off about um, doing a little presentation mm -hmm. for the seniors, what may be recorded. I don't, I don't know, you know, I just figured I'd just bring it up so you guys knew. I think when, they were supposed to- take, When do we know the numbers? And that was something I was never very clear on. Uh, we have the number, the new numbers already. For fiscal year 24? Yeah. Okay. So we have the cost of living included on the right amounts, mm -hmm. and we have a new um, amount that people will be getting. Receiving. What's the first deadline that somebody would have to meet to file for uh, an abatement or an exemption? exemption? Whatever. Okay. Exemption after July 1st. They have until April first okay. to get the exemption in. We would prefer them um, handing in their paperwork before the bills go out. That way, it already is reflected on their the bills, bill. so there's less confusion, and it's not the, like the a, bill meeting the January bill. Yes. Right. Okay. So we usually like it in October. Before you're right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Before yeah. November. That way, we have enough time to process input, and then it'll be on the bills. So this presentation is explaining all this. Um, it's explaining it, yep. Yeah, okay. And I think then in the strawberry vines, excuse me, they're supposed to be putting in that that sheet you asked about in there, showing you know um, how much a, a widow will, you know, what the assets and income, you know, all that different information listed. I don't. Know I'd if really like to see that on the website. Okay, possible. I can. Uh, um, so the September strawberry vines already printed. Um, is, it, is it in there? No. Well, September's this week. Uh, we gave it to her weeks ago. All right. I don't know if it's in there or not. I don't think Lisa found it. So I, I think don't... if we could plan to, I don't know, meet with them or have a question and answer session, right. it should be October because much beyond that, you're really getting close. Yeah. I mean, you want the information as soon as you can. And then there's the January deadline when the, where they can apply for anything that's relevant then. But I don't think we can go much beyond October. Um, well, we, we're sending out the application September 1st. Well, right. maybe Thursday because. Um, and so we were trying to coincide with the with the strawberry vines, and then we could, you know, take care of any questions or a little present. The other thing too is, but I don't know if it, it may be if they schedule this meeting, it may not be over there. It may be in this building because people are going to show up who aren't necessarily elderly but are uh, eligible for other kinds of yeah. other abatements, or you might have veterans show up because they don't even think. You know, it might be a good idea also to see help, if help the parents. if the veterans agent could attend that. So if it's a meeting and the board of assessors are there to answer whatever questions 
And if the veterans agent could be there, it, it could be a general discussion of, okay. of so it might be a little cost of living I thing. Think, I and, think we should prepare for that. Yeah, and, and if they could do it here, and, and actually it's in the strawberry, but also get it out uh, on channel nine or somewhere that this meeting is going to be held. It's open to the public. Anyone has these questions <laughs> and it can be done in October. No, we can do it. Right. Right. So okay. Certainly announce it for selectmen. They do. Yeah. 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 Um, Even uh, town no, meeting, no? Can't do that at town meeting. Right? Uh, I don't know. We really can't. No. Well, can't well, well no. But it's, a, it's October 30th. Oh, that's it's only our moderator will allow that. I'm not sure. <laughs> well, I hear he's a tough guy. Yeah. <laughs> no, you know, he's right. He's right. <laughs> May I ask, uh, what did, so I remember speaking of the town meeting, we did pass uh, an article that said we're going to adopt a cost of living for the actual amount. We, uh, what did that turn I out to I think we just decided that here, right? It wasn't something that went to the- No, 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 no. Decision. There was There was a, and I'm talking about something different. This is the, not the- no more than a twenty-five percent or something. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking no. about the actual dollar amount. It was it, it was an article where we were going. There was some number. I, I believe it was supposed to be ten or twenty percent or something like that. That was supposed to be added to the thousand dollars. So we're giving more than a thousand dollars. Yes, it's based on that was a confusing wording of that article. Okay. Did it pass? Yeah. But I, I think it Remember doesn't I, mean I even it can't asked be you. more than a. Oh, I gave you two thumbs up. Yes. <laughs> I, think, I think it can't be more than a percentage of. Yeah, I'm just be, wondering what the percentage is. Right. I it's, I don't have anything on me. I don't know what the. So we're going to have to be prepared to answer that question. Right. At this informational meeting. And I'm, it, I would think it should be on that chart. That's yeah, that, I just don't you know the chart. It's like the exemption, you know, these are the qualifications, and you'll get X. Right, and, it, and it that chart does say dollars. that. Yeah. yeah. So okay. our next meeting is September what? You get the list there? No, I don't. No. All right. So for the next meeting, I think it's the twentieth. If you can take a look at what kind of information we have right now, and bring that to the meeting, we'll have an agenda item to prepare for a I'll call it public informational meeting. Uh, whatever. Yes. And and. We can see what you got, and if there's anything more to add, or we have questions, we can get that done. Um, so we probably have at least maybe two meetings before we, there would be an October meeting for this public meeting I thing. Think there's just one in September, and then it's probably the beginning okay. of October. All right. So that, that we gotta, if we look at the, we look at it at our next meeting. Whatever you come up with, we can kind of fine tune it and see if there's anything else we need to put in there. Okay. Um, uh, so that we can get prepared. And if you let uh, Bella know yeah. that it's not only going to be uh, Council on Aging, but we yeah. want to open this up to the public because it, it, the tax changes or the benefits or whatever, there could be, we expect there would be more people applying. Okay. All right. So, because of the income. All right. So, that's right. A motion on it. A motion on that, right? No, we're just kind of. No, Next just item. Been, yeah, it'll be on the next agenda. Small commercial. Um, so that's something that um, I just wanted us to, to talk a little bit about. I don't really have the information here. I just wanted to bring it, you know, do a little research, give it to you guys. But um, there is a small commercial exemption um, where if their personal property is under a certain dollar amount, they don't get a personal property bill, tax bill. So this would help. Businesses. This would help the small oh, landscaper. No, more like the hairdresser out of her house. That type of information. What's the dollar? Oh, you don't know. You have to be on. Oh, I, I usually it's under five thousand or ten thousand dollars in personal property. Okay. Um, because I think we have quite a few that we I gotcha. have this year that we didn't have in the past. Um, okay. I haven't seen the numbers yet. Um, Okay. But a few exemptions or people that aren't exempt? People that aren't recognized at all yet. That should be, but aren't. That haven't been. So thinking. so I'm trying to get something in place. So if we suddenly have it to people. 200 people. more people that working out of their house that we didn't know about that have business certificates that maybe haven't been verified, 
Um, we gave business certificates to RRC who does the personal property. And I don't know if that's happened before. Okay. So there's quite a few, I think, that have never received personal property tax bills. Um, so, and there may be some who will no longer be taxed. Yes, this okay. is true too. So I want to have something in place. It's a good idea. You know, you don't want to penalize the home business person that no, has, left. has a chair and a hair dryer. I mean, Somerset has it. Um, there's a few other places that have it too. Is this something the board votes to do? Or is this already? That's more information that's... I need to. All right, I need to look at. I just wanted to throw it out to you guys to. I think it's okay. a good idea to pursue what exactly the guideline yeah. is or yeah. what the dollar figure right. is. So, right. Uh, I think it might be something that you have to go to a town meeting for. Okay. So I don't think it we'd be able to do anything with this one because the warrant closes end of September, right? Yep. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I don't know. Okay. If, if it requires a vote, it'll probably be off till the annual town meeting. But um, if if we could discuss this at the next our next meeting, just to see what you were able to find out, right. if it requires a town meeting vote, uh, if it's one that the Board of Assessors has the power to approve, yep. whatever. I'm pretty right. sure it's a, it's a town vote. Okay, so that one, I guess, is... All right. Any public input? All the public. I don't think so. Correspondence? No. Use a minute. I didn't know if anyone... I sent them out. Okay. Good. All right, so explain what's going on with email. Because uh, is your email working? I haven't gotten anything from you in it's about six weeks. So well, mine has been a minutes from me. No. Uh, oh, because it's your date and address. Yeah. Well, they, they made some changes, but I guess everyone's email has been crazy on and off since they made those changes. And I guess people, like our phones are all screwed up. Oh, I, she's Comcast. I'm Comcast. She doesn't so, do that one like you do. Like for the general public, the emails are all screwy. No, the date. No, the date. I got your minutes, and I get. Right, but you don't have. So you don't have that date and address. Dash ma dot. Oh, so the date and. So. Um, well, I thought we were using Yahoo or something for him. No, he moved to the. He moved to the date. Moved to the date and one because that's kind of what you're supposed to do. But. <laughs> okay. Um. But that's okay. So the last email I got was on August fifteenth. Okay, so wow. I don't know. I told Leanne about that today because my email's down here. I haven't, my email hasn't worked since the 24th. It has so been, Bill, it's it's been down for a support. lot of August because um, Tommy Ferry is one of the people that I yeah. regularly communicate with and he, there's no response. And I'm thinking, that's not like Tommy. And I call him up and say, Tommy, he'd say, the email is down. So I just call him and leave a message. So, so Let's push this off the text board. Yeah, so it's a Mullen issue or what? No, it's uh, it's that Chris guy, Chris, the support guy, the support guy. But everyone has been. Leanne's like the middle person, so if she's trying to, she's going to try to get something together. Well, he had to talk to us like on an individual basis to to move us to this new server thing. So I think it's a server. I don't know. I don't know everything. Okay, so but our phones are all screwed up. So on your scope, Bill, yes. if Bill. Needs an answer. He can talk to Leanne. Yeah, I would just go okay, to Leanne to correct it and say, "Well, I need my emails. This is really important because right I because oh, okay. he had to go in and they changed the path of it, but okay. mine's been changed and it. I don't have it's I don't, not working. So I don't know what set so the whole thing off. Kind of important to get that email. No, yeah, yeah. So, so this is something, this is what I want to say. This is not a it's minor it's issue. A this major is, issue. It's a major really issue. And it's time sensitive because if <laughs> something comes to him that he needs to respond to right away and he doesn't get it, well, then that's a big problem. I, I don't think you should have to text me for that. I know. I was like so. texting him yesterday. I'm like, yeah, I don't know. What good for you for at least saying he might not be getting his email. We got to move this forward and Bill needs to know. So you've gone outside the scope of necessarily. I think it's screwed up my phone. He does. Nothing comes through. I can't it's, get calls. This, I don't know what's happening. all issue. Bill, I would say right. you might understand the issue more than most because you have it's, tech it's, background. It's, so it's I would going maybe on. say, let's let's make a motion to empower Bill. So those were, Bill, you should follow up on that because this is not a little thing. Sorry. And I get I know, and I know. Leanne probably doesn't know either, but I think this is pressure needs to be put on the tech guy to make this a top priority, not a, hey, I'll get to it when I can. Well, you can't have that. Mike has, has been on the guy's case. The problem is we're not seeing results. It's one thing to be down yeah. a day or two, you need to but when it goes on and on, 
and when it affects telephones too, how do you communicate? Yeah, you can't. There's a real problem. Right. I okay. Mean, okay. I can't. A uh, motion to accept the minutes as presented for August 9th. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. That's it. And anticipated. Motion. Okay. Right, that's it. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Ten forty one. Sorry.